Welcome back, Zero K fans. To more analysts are done. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And I'm going to be doing a match for the last one: Steel Blue and Orpheus on Red Comet. Steel Blue going for the Rover Assembly, while Orpheus responds in kind. Both going for a standard Dart Scorcher startup, though Steel Blue being a bit more aggressive, going for more, like three darts, four Scorchers before going for any workers, while Orpheus two, one, and then a worker. Actually, Steel Blue has no workers on queue at all. That's kind of surprising, in fact. It looks like Steel Blue going for a very strong cheese, not even going for early metal extractors, going very strong on just pushing these Scorchers out and getting probably a comm kill. Considering the darts have slowed, they don't actually need to have four Scorchers, but... That's... That'll remain to be seen. I don't expect this will work, because... Unfortunately, the one thing that is spoiled to me when I'm looking at games, which is good that it's spoiled to me so I can actually plan out the show, is the length of the game. So I know that the game is a bit longer than what a comm kill would necessarily imply. But... This is still very risky. As still Lou has been scattered out doing this, I mean, Orphelia sees, hey, there's nothing. There's, there is a, a metal extractor, no power, nothing, like, this is weird. And indeed, this is weird, as the darts are able to come in here and not doing damage. Still Lou, no! You had this! You had this! It's just a matter of timing and micro. Whenever you go for a cheese trial like this, you've got to be paying full attention to it, because that's your entire game is resting on this. That's the entire reason you do this, is to get that and get the damage in, and if you don't get that, you can't do much with it. Unfortunately, losing those two darts is a big deal. Granted, the Scorch is still managing to get a fair bit of damage done regardless. Should be able to get rid of some of these metal extractors. Probably won't get rid of the factory. Micro the Scorcher in production, and does indeed, actually, the factory, very much at risk of going down as well. And there it is. The Scorch is not getting quite close enough to make it work, and certainly not getting behind the factory enough to make it work. Oof, they almost have it. They almost, almost, almost have it. It's so close, but unfortunately, Ophelius' commander... Orphelius, your commander, saving the day just barely, but Steel Blue still managing to have that pay off. More or less. I mean, in terms of army value, it's, well, pretty even at zero. In terms of metal use, Orphelius, I mean, they're behind in terms of economy, and that's the key thing. Steel Blue managed to turn that into a strong economic push, but at the same time, Orphelius did have a startup metal base over to the southeast. However, Steel Blue might be going for this again, and this would not be a good idea. I mean, Orphelius, yes, they're damaged, but Steel Blue isn't building that much faster. Going for a follow-up at this point is going to be very risky. If they manage to pull it off, it'd be cool. Like, do a bit more damage, get rid of a few more metal extractors. Maybe. But without the dart support, it's going to be a bit trickier. And also... Yeah. That's going to be... That's going to be impossible to get to the factory in time. Like, if they got to the factory, that'd probably be game. But there's no angle from which they could do that, especially with the Scorchers separated the way they are. If they regrouped, that'd be fine. But Orphelius can see that Scorcher coming. And also Raiders being rebuilt on top of that. But mostly, the Scorchers are not grouping up. If they wanted to go finish off the factory, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but it's close. I mean, they almost could. Then, yeah. Three Scorchers, dive in, get rid of the Lotus, get rid of the factory, done. Orphelius is probably dead in the water. Probably will throw in the towel, too, but at this point, Steel Blue just now building a mason, which means they don't have much to work with, and now they're not committing either to checking out where they can raid or going around the back and just finishing off the factory, which will rebuild in time, or repair itself in time. So yeah, nice. I mean, it's a good. it was a good try, but definitely not really amounting to all that much at this point now that Orphelius has managed to get their economy back on track and their army value back on track. So yeah, good try, worth attempting, didn't manage to actually follow up off that, and I feel like a lot of that Steel Blue is trying to do a strategy that requires far more multitasking than they're showing comfort with. I'd like to see them pull it off, it's just that it is a very difficult thing to pull off. This is hard to do. Like, this is not something I would necessarily blame someone for having a difficult time pulling off, because it's just, there's a lot to pay attention to. And in 0k, it's just, you have a lot to go back to your base to rebuild on and continue expansion on, on top of the fact that you have to be very careful about the exact positioning of all of your units and the exact velocity of all your units, too, because with, with rovers or any vehicles, you can't turn on a dime. So you have to be careful of turning radius as well. And there's a lot of little micro-elements that can make or break this kind of push, and at this point, unfortunately for Steel Blue, this is a break, because they're not going to be able to do any meaningful damage. Getting rid of a Lotus is not much. While at the same time, Orphelius has the entire south side of the map taken, and that, that forward Mason doing a lot of good work, setting up. 
Steel Blue, on the other hand, they're managing to get a little bit here and there. It's it's working reasonably well, but it's kind of hard to make that work especially well when they don't have as much of an economy. The one thing they, however, do have is an advantage on energy, which Orphelius is now dealing with, so it's not much of an advantage. Orphelius likely won't excess in the meantime. Still, though, it does mean that any metal extractors lost aren't a huge deal for Orphelius yet. But at this point, yeah, Steel Blue being very focused on continuing the strategy, at this point, it's failed. Like, there's no way. They don't have the unit value, or they barely have the unit value. They are catching up in terms of economy, but only because their economy is hitting parity, not because of that early raid. If anything, the early raid has led to basically nothing, which is a bit of a shame, but alas, that happens sometimes. So at any rate, they are they should be able to deal the damage they are planning to deal, as they have been planning to deal it, and have been dealing it reasonably well. It's just actually getting in there in the right positioning and now that the expansion has been spotted that's the right positioning now it's been noted that darts should be able to get enough damage in here on top of the scorchers that all the metal extractors will go down because this stardust here was designed to stop a raid from the north but this raid's coming from the west so it doesn't even matter i mean the start is getting a bit of damage in but now that Ophelius has lost a lot of economy to steel blue now steel blue has a position they can build from now they have a position that from here they could actually get that economic advantage they wanted from raiding from the start. Unfortunately, losing the Scorchers in the process does not do them any favors in that regard. So, a little bit tricky to make that work well. Not the worst thing in the world, just, you know, a little bit difficult. Requires a little bit of extra work to make that fully pay off. Still, though, it's not a bad position overall. I mean, still blue right now, they do have a slight armor value advantage of 200 metal, and Orphelius' commander, way out in the open with nothing to save it, it is going down to these Scorchers. Unfortunately, they're not going to save themselves in the process, so the commander does manage to kill them all with his death explosion. But Orphelius losing the storage and losing a bunch of economy, and now Steel Blue has twice the metal of their opponent. And there's nothing forward to build up. In fact, the only Masons here are inside of Orphelius' Oh, there's one back here that wasn't killed. So there is one Mason outside of Orphelius' base that is able to expand a fair bit. And the counterattack is fierce. Unfortunately, losing all those Scorchers to the Commander kill does mean that Steel Blue's massive army advantage they had was lost as a result. They're managing to pull back thanks to their stronger economy, but they still lost a lot of units. They generally don't want to do that. Like, yes, going for a calm dive is a good idea, but you want to pull your units away as quickly as possible. Like, they're all going to die. Don't let them die. Steel Blue let them die, and that opened up this counterattack for Ophelius. Now Ophelius can just tear apart Steel Blue's economy and destroy the advantage, getting rid of a bunch of workers in the process, and that is huge. Like, now at this point, the only Masons left are Ophelius's. Steel Blue has no expansion constructors at all, because they, because they lost all the units to kill the commander. It's a really important tactical micro trick, but when you're killing a commander, it's you have to bear in mind the death explosion, or else you will lose your units and possibly lose a bunch of your advantage to a counterattack. Because now, Steel Blue and Orphelius have the same metal value because of that counterattack. If Steel Blue had not gotten counterattacked like that, Orphelius would be behind by at least 10 metal per second. But that was the loss of the metal. All these units dead means Steel Blue lost the entire army they had that gave them the advantage they were working with that allowed them to kill the commander in the first place. However, this push on the darts up front, managing to get rid of a Scorcher, but at great cost. Honestly, Orphelius is going to lose his entire force if they push forward with it, and they realize it quickly enough to at least save a couple Scorchers. But now Steel Blue has managed to rebuild. Assuming they can actually manage to get their production built up as well, they only have the one Caretaker and could use more. And they are building more, so they got that sorted. Still, though, the amount of the excess on top of the reclaim, not the best idea. But hey, at least they have their commander. They do have that added little bit of construction. They have, was it 12 build power at this point? Yeah, 12 build power at this point. But Orphelius expanding at the same time, because again, Orphelius has expansion constructors. Like, Steel Blue doesn't. So Steel Blue's walking on the back foot just because they are unable to build. They have their masons being built up now, but even then only the one to get the caretakers up, which at least will get rid of some excess. It gets rid of the chance of excess when they start reclaiming, which they are now, because they can, and that will get their economy back up on par with Orphelius. But they should theoretically have had the game by now. And they are actually managing to push back in. Like, anytime Steel Blue is able to push in, they're able to do a lot of damage. It's just that they need to make sure they keep their army alive in the process, and if they do that, they've got the game. If they don't do that, then Orphelius is able to maintain a position 
I mean, eventually we will start getting into Ravagers most likely, and once Ravagers come on scene, I think Orphelius will have the advantage. Just because they have had a stronger economy this entire time. But, well, except for the bit where Steel Blue had the advantage, but after the counterattack, no longer the case. But the thing is that Steel Blue is still winning in this early Raider phase. Actually, how much knowledge does Steel Blue have? They have quite a bit. They do know that there's a bunch of stuff over here, over to the south, that they are clearly planning to get rid of. But they are going to get flanked effectively by Orphelius. Ooh, they would have gone flanked effectively. Good surround, though, to get round back on Orphelius' Scorchers and destroy them with minimal losses on Steel Blue's part. So at this point, what is Steel Blue's overall army advantage? It, it is... Actually, not by much. It's like 100 metal. And that's one Scorcher. Not nothing, but... Not a huge amount. Now Steel Blue, however, going for Rippers well, or Phileas instead going for Fencers. Trying to take the win that way. Which isn't a bad idea, but at the same time, Orphelius managing to get rid of yet another Mason. That leaves that leaves one Mason on the side of Steel Blue. Mostly doing reclaim, which is that's still good work. And that's still gonna help them out. But it's not necessarily enough, especially with the north side not being rebuilt. I mean that was what the Mason was for. It was entirely trying to rebuild that. And it can't. That's the thing, is they've got to be, like, Steel Blue has to be really careful. Mind you, so does Orphelius, because, again, the naked expansion is going to get punished. I mean, the fencers have been spotted, and why are they being attacked head-on? That's suicide. Well, Steel Blue throwing away a perfectly good position to deal with a bunch of naked expansion in order to die to rippers, or sorry, die to fencers, because that will kill Scorchers pretty effectively. But, no, that is not the case. Still Blue losing a bunch of their army again, thanks to those fencers. I mean, that was the entire point of building them, is because they generally handily get rid of the Scorchers. But, yeah, that's what they did. They, they got rid of the Scorchers. They did exactly the thing they were supposed to do. So, well done to those particular units, because, hey, they did their job. They had one job, they did it actually quite well. So, yeah, that, that, that works. Anyway, at this point, Steel Blue is... I mean, they're still trying to push a position. But it seems so tenuous. The Rippers are going to help. It's... I don't know if it's going to help much. Especially with Steel Blue's commander at massive risk of death. Possibly going to die? Definitely going to die. No, maybe not. Maybe? Maybe? There it is. There's the death. Getting rid of a bunch of our affiliates. Well, whatever our affiliates had sent. Which opens things up for Steel Blue, though their economy is so weak at this point that it's hard to really say what the options they have. And having lost their commander, they have, like, two masons, and that's it for construction. Compared to Orphelius having... five. Like, Orphelius is way ahead in build power, way ahead in reclaim potential, way ahead in... in static economy. They've got everything. I mean, the Rippers are going to be nice. They'll get rid of the Scorchers effectively enough. But now Orphelia is switching over to Ravagers, and this is where I figured Orphelia would have the advantage. The Ravagers just allow for fewer tricks, both because they're slower and because they just get rid of anything coming at them that are trying to be tricky. And also, Orphelia has the economy advantage. The Ravagers are just going to be outbuilt, or the Ravagers are going to outbuilt Steel Blue. And on top of that, the Fencers coming in here, continuing to push and get rid of all the defenses that have been built up to get rid of the Scorchers by Steel Blue. They're not going to do anything against the Fencers. Stardust do not have the range for that. I mean, the Ravagers trying to stop these Scorchers, actually not managing to get rid of them before they stop the Naked Expansion. So at the very least, the Naked Expansion is gotten rid of somewhat. And with the flank on this, the Raptors not managing to get a whole lot of mileage. And the Ripper's able to do so on the flip side, so that doesn't mean the Raptors... So the... Rippers might be able to get rid of the factory, and that could still be enough. Orphelius is taking, a, is taking a beating, but it's not as much as Steel Blue would like. However, that's all the caretakers gone, so Orphelius not able to use this build power. That's the key thing, and all the metal likes us. No, that storage is still alive, so Orphelius is not accessing an additional 500 metal on top of the metal they are now accessing on account of having all this metal, all this income, and no production with which to use it. That was... That was actually really clever. I mean, that's the thing you want to do. In general, if you can find caretakers, get the caretakers. Don't worry about the factory yet. Your opponent will excess. It's just... It's not quite like killing a factory because they can still build something, but it massively slows down their production. Like, it's better than killing off their economy, honestly. If you kill off their economy, they still have the production if they reclaim. If you kill off their production, well, then they got nothing. 
And to kill the caretakers, that's just as good as killing a factory. Possibly better, because it's easier to do, and you have the same effect of reducing the number of units being built. So that's a bit of a point for Steel Blue. They could actually take this into an advantage state, and considering their army value is... What? Orphelius has no army? Orphelius has no army. Orphelius is entirely built around defenses right now. Steel Blue has a really good position to work from. Orphelius's main advantage here is not numerical, but merely positional. They're spread out very far, meaning that any attempts for Steel Blue to harass this are going to be just... They're going to be mired in the distance alone. And there's also things like these solar plants, which are getting in the way. So with that, though, Orphelius has managed to restart their production, managed to turn this excess into a bunch of production, and also get this reclaim on top of that. So they're, they're going to be scary in a second. I mean, that took a little while to rebuild, and that did open things up for Steel Blue to get back in here, but the army value, it's catching up fast. It's catching up very fast on Orphelius' part. Remember, there's all this reclaim in the main base, and it's generally all this reclaim around the map that can be taken, or Orphelius is taking, and turning into production that would be kind of nice if one of the caretakers actually did help out here instead of trying to reclaim, but hey, that's still something. So despite the excess, which is 3,000 metal, ouch, 3,000 metal excess, that's not nothing. I mean, that's what I mean, the caretakers make that work. That's, that's an entire army's worth of units not being built. Like, all these Ravagers, like, 12 Ravagers were not built because of that excess, and a lot of that was because Orphelius did not have caretakers to work with, so Steel Blue got a good advantage off that. But still, it's just a matter of trying to figure out what to do now, as Steel Blue has an economic disadvantage. Orphelius is building up with 70 build power in their factory, and even then, still accessing somehow. Oh, no energy, that's why. They need energy. They need loads of energy. If they had energy, they'd be, they'd be solid. They'd have this game. They don't have energy yet, though, which means Steel Blue has a way in. It's a small way in, barely, but yeah. Also, I picked this game partly because of that. I was actually looking through a bunch of games. I tended to, I was trying to pick games that were interesting or reasonably even or involved players we'd either seen before or hadn't seen much of recently. Like, I was kind of wanted to follow up the tournament a bit, but also I haven't seen Steel Blue in a long time. So I thought, hey, a match with Steel Blue. Let's see how they're doing. And the answer is, they're really aggressive and want to raid all the time. But their economy play is a bit rusty. I'm not sure how much they played recently. Still, their raiding game is on point. So I give them that. I mean, definitely, that was, that was a very strong opening. And unfortunately, it did lead to... Oh, well, except that one bit where the darts were caught out by the Lotus. That was a bit of a shame. But otherwise, yeah, Orphelius managing to push this back, and I don't see any easy way that Steel Blue gets out of this. They're defending fine with the Rippers, but they have no easy way of pushing, and the Rippers probably won't be able to get the damage in there, though at the same time, Crash is coming in for no reason. Orphelius making a bad read on an air switch. I I mean, it's not a bad idea to have them just in case, but at the same time, if it weren't for the fact that Orphelius has a massive economic lead, doing that could be suicide. However, they have a massive economic lead, so hey, whatever. That's fine. That'll be no problem whatsoever. So at this point, Orphelius mostly just playing cleanup. And Steel Blue trying desperately to defend against this with what they can, the right units they have. But now that Orphelius is going for gunship plant, we're probably going to see a crow or maybe some Nimbuses use them to clean up the rest of the forces on the ground and just force Steel Blue to surrender. On the other hand, though, they might not actually get that chance. Because again, these rippers coming in here are making long but eventual work of these Ravagers. Actually, very long work of these Ravagers. These Ravagers got rid of three of the Rippers, and more Ravagers are on the way, so that didn't quite work out effectively. And only one Ripper does not a riot unit make. It takes too many shots to get rid of Scorchers, so no. Unfortunately, that Ripper will find nothing useful. That being said, though, Steel Blue does have... A fairly large army of Ravager Ripper coming forward. They should be able to tear apart most of these Lotuses and make it a bit difficult for Orphelius to maintain this forward and southern position. Especially as Orphelius did get a bit distracted with that attack to the north. So, Steel Blue has been at least keeping Orphelius' army split up reasonably well. But that may just fall apart here. If these, if these Scorchers find the mileage they need, they get rid of all the expansions that have been rebuilt by Steel Blue, which, good as for that, always rebuild your expansions. That is going to be still death. And the Mason going down, another 
big blow. I mean, at this point, there's three masons around the map, four steel blues, so they have options. They're not as stuck as they were the last time they lost a mason. But that being said, they've got so little of the map compared to Orphelius. The fact that they're actually surviving as well as they are is remarkable. It's very impressive. Orphelius is throwing a lot of scorchers into this and not getting a whole lot else out of it. And a lot of a lot of production is also becoming masons, but the masons are on reclaim duty, and that reclaim is going to become far more production with all the build power there and all the energy there that Orphelius has. Yeah, that's going to be nuts. That's just going to be a massive swath of units. I'm not sure if even the number of rippers that exist will stop the Scorchers, especially with the Ravager support. I, I just don't see it. Although, on the other hand, Steel Blue managing to get their economy back up. And I'm actually managing to get a strong front from which to build that economy, so they could still make that work. But, that's that aside, the Scorch is coming in there. I don't agree. I, I kind of agree with Filthus here about using Fencer Ravager rather than using Scorcher Ravager. But, we are not seeing that. We are instead seeing Scorcher Ravager. More, honestly, pure Ravager at this point. No, never mind, there's the Fencer. Orphelius has got it. On, they've got it. Eventually. And on top of that, there will be some harpies should this gunja plant ever be properly built, which it doesn't look like it ever will. While Steel Blue, on the other hand, the units are not quite in the position they need to be in, mostly focusing on the northern expansion, which is the one under greater threat. And the Ravagers should be unable to stop that Mason, so there they go. Mason's still alive! Steel Blue managed to save one! Good job, Steel Blue! Actually, that does put Steel Blue in a slightly better position. They have... 40-ish metal per second compared to Orphelius's, okay, 70 sometimes with Reclaim. But yeah, if those, if that Reclaim can stop, if there was a way that Steel Blue had to destroy the Reclaiming units, then there'd be a chance. But there isn't. Also, oh, did that get bugged out? Oh, I think the characters aren't working on it right now, so Orphelius is starting to get very dangerously close to excessing, and they don't have anything else built up to make that not an excess. Regardless, though, the army value? No, army value is very close. Steel Blue still potentially has its for army value. It's just a matter of exactly where the army is positioned. And a lot of it, a lot of the problem here is that Ophelia is still on the Scorchers means that they're both able to win on position, but also they lose when they go into a straight up fight with the Rippers, which is exactly what happened here. Completely destroying Ophelia's army value. No, even then, Ophelia's army value is still within 400 metal. As Ophelia is rebuilding their army and does have that stronger economy. Like, if the Masons can be stopped, then Steel Blue has a shot at this, but that's the problem, is that Steel Blue right now has just been slowly but surely dying. If Orphelius loses these Masons, there is a shot at it, but the Stingers are going to make that a problem, and at this point, like, with this factory, or at least with the units being built, there's no way. Maybe Badgers, but that seems, like, too little too late. Fencer, maybe. I mean, that would help a bit, but again, the Stingers being up... I still feel like that's too little too late. I don't know. Orphelius has just got a massive advantage at this point. Like, army value isn't huge, but defense value is through the roof. Mostly Stingers just built up around the map. Like, this... This is where Orphelius is all laid out. There's no easy way for Steel Blue to fix that. Or to get through that. They can power through it losing units, but given that they have an economic disadvantage, and they have had an economic disadvantage for most of the game... It's not much. The only thing going for them is the fact that their army value is so high. Like the fact that their army value is as high as it is is impressive and largely to do with the unit choice more than the actual money spent. But if Steel Blue throws away their army, then it's over. And even without throwing away their army, it might still be over as the Ravagers over to the north are destroying all these bases and stopping the Stingers from getting that work done. And with that, that should be enough. That's going to be the opening that Orphelius needs. There's no Rippers or anything near it. Ravager Ripper last stand going over to the north side to try to stop it, but if that... If this doesn't stop it, then I don't see Steel Blue having any way out of this. And I think the Steel Blue is going to be completely torn to pieces here. Like, the Rippers, they're doing their best. They're getting rid of some Ravagers here and there. They've got something, but it's not necessarily enough, and with that, the Scorchers are able to get to the back lines, and if they get that factory, then it's going to be over, and they have no opposition getting to that factory. Even an Ampbot factory being built up. A little bit late on that one. But yeah, Steel Blue realizing there's no way they can stop the Scorchers from destroying their production, and honestly, no way they can easily get back at this. But hey, for the amount of time they spent at like half the metal of their opponent, which was half the game, they maintained a position very strongly 
Part of that, I think, was the fact that Orphelius was using a lot of Scorchers and Steel Blue had the counter to that. And part of it was just Steel Blue did raid really effectively to keep Orphelius on their toes. Like, the positioning on Steel Blue's part was quite smart. It's just, without the money, it was very difficult to make that actually pay off in the end. And yeah, that's also true. The Steel Blue, when they did lose their army, that was... All of it became Orphelius' defenses. Like, their units became Orphelius' static defenses. Just look at the way the graph is built up, and they die, and then the defenses go up, and... Yeah. I did like that caretaker push, though, that, that happened in the mid-game. That Steel Blue did, when they destroyed all the caretakers around the factory. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to get much of a follow-up afterwards, but it did stabilize quite a bit. So even though there was that metal advantage, the excess because of that raid, even things out a fair bit for a while. But anyway, that was that, so I hope you enjoyed that, since that was going to be the last match for tonight. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, which, if you care about my other stuff for Battle Right, well, that's tomorrow morning. I'm doing a couple tournaments tomorrow. I will hopefully remember to host them on my channel. If not, well, the Rival Esports Tournament is in the afternoon, so that's like 2 p.m. PST, 10 UTC. And that otherwise is going to be it. So thanks for watching, everyone, and have a good night.